All right, hello. In this video, I'm going to be recapping CalBC Unit 9 in my class, which is all the techniques of integration. And so I'm going to start by looking at what did we learn in each of the lessons, and then I'll, for each lesson, I'll dive in a little bit deeper and maybe work a couple examples. Okay, so we started off, we learned about integrating products. So we had the algebraic simplifications, and that was, you know, where we had like square root of x on the outside of some parentheses and like 3 minus x or something on the inside. And we distributed before we anti differentiated. We've been doing that for a while. We did the same thing right there. Okay. Then we also learned about UDU last semester, change of variables, use substitution. We did a little bit more practice on that. Then we developed a product rule, and by product rule I mean UDV or integration by parts. Um, we learned how to choose U and DV, that was I late. Okay, so I might just call that I late. And then we did a bunch of examples, of course. Okay, then the next day we did integration, rate integration of quotients, right? Okay, again, started with algebraic simplification because we've already been doing that. Uh, we learned when to do partial fraction decomposition. That was when the denominator was a degree poly two polynomial that was factorable and the factors were distinct. And we learned when to use polynomial division. That was when it was bigger on top and probably the denominator was just like x plus a number or x minus a number because we think that that's how it's going to show up, if it's going to show up on the AP exam. And we did a bunch of examples. Then in the third lesson, we learned about improper integration, which was pretty much integrating against asymptotes, be they vertical or horizontal. So we could integrate over vertical asymptotes. We could integrate all the way to infinity. That's up against a horizontal asymptote or negative infinity. Okay. We learned how to ensure credit on the free response, and that was by turning it into a limit. Right? If you didn't turn it into a limit and it was on free response, you got no credit. Okay. Seen, we've seen those examples from previous years for your response, right? Okay, and then miscellaneous integrals. All the way from obscure formulas that we need to recognize, arc trig, you know, secant, cosecant, their derivatives, we need to know the antiderivatives of those things. And, you know, just ones we may have forgotten about, you know, antiderivative of 2 to the x, we need to be able to do that. But we also learned about completing the square. And, you know, in my opinion, that's probably going to be an arc tangent type integral where you, your denominator is, numerator is going to be a constant, denominator would be one larger than a perfect square. Because past that, you know, any arc sine integrals or other complete the square integrals, because there are others out there, I've looked at them. I think that they are too algebraically intensive to be in multiple choice no calculator on the AP exam because that would mean that you'd have to be able to do them in two minutes or less. Okay, so let's dive in. Let's do some, let's do some examples. Okay, back to 9.1, integral of a product. Okay. Um, okay, we need to be able to do the algebraic simplification like this one right here. I'm not going to use UDU or UDV on this one because both of these pieces are algebraic. I can think of this as x to the 1 half and then I can use the distributive property, right? I could say that this is equal to 5x to the 1 half minus x to the 3 halves before anti-differentiating and then I can, you know, do what I would usually do. Okay, divide by 3 halves is multiplying by 2 thirds and then I'm going to add 1 to the power and divide by the new power and add plus C. Okay, we needed to be able to use UDU, which I'm just going to show you one that would fit that pattern. Okay, both of these would fit the pattern because there's like a composition of functions where the derivative of the inside of the composition is appearing on the outside with multiplication. Here, we know that the derivative of x squared is 2x, which is proportional to x, so that's close enough that I can use UDU on that. Okay, this one, this one would probably have a graph or a table attached to it, but if you see f and f prime in the same integrand, that's a dead giveaway for u substitution. Okay, so I'm not going to actually do that because if you need to see me doing u substitution, you go back to my channel, you search for u, u du or u substitution, and you will see a multitude of videos, lots of examples, hours of footage of me doing u substitution integrals. I'm not going to do any more. Okay, another thing we need to be able to recognize is u dv. And the thing about UDV is that it's kind of a flatter product. It's not as interesting of a product, right? It's not got an outside and an inside. It's just two things multiplied together, each of which we, you know, hopefully one of them we know how to anti-differentiate. This we don't know how to anti-differentiate really in this class. I think may have showed you how, but it also requires integration by parts. So from these, we need to know that the integral of UDV is equal to U times V minus the integral of V DU. 
We also need to know if this becomes a definite integral from A to B. I just need to evaluate UV from A to B and run that integral from A to B as well. Okay. When it comes to choosing U and DV, I use the I late. Okay. I is for inverse trig, log, algebraic, that's all the powers of x, square root x, 1 over x, all that stuff, trig, and exponential. Okay. Up here, the first one that you run into, that's what you're going to choose for u. And then the second one that you run into is what you're going to choose for dv. And I, well, I didn't give myself room to write dv in there. but okay. So if I had, say, you know, trig and exponential, which I did not do for y'all in class this year because we just didn't have time. If I had trig and exponential, I'd let u equal trig and dv equal exponential. Okay? And you know, any other combination of those that you might see. But that's integral of a product. In 9.2, we looked at taking the antiderivative of a quotient. And that could take a few different forms. I think the first thing that we looked at was what do we do if it's bigger on top? Okay, And those are pretty easy to recognize. These are both bigger on top, right? I've got a higher power on top than on the bottom. But I'm going to take two different approaches for these. So I can't just say, like, oh, anytime it's bigger on, bigger on top, it's always going to be synthetic division. No, you have to, like, you have to think about this a little bit, right? Because the algebraic simplification is still true, right? This one, you would just say, all right, that's x to the 3 plus x to the negative 2. You would distribute negative 2 powers of x, or you could divide each of these things, x to the 5 divided by x to the 2. 1 divided by x to the 2. Either way, we're going to do that, and then we're going to use the power rule. Okay. I also need to say, that okay, this is the type of thing that we could use polynomial division on. Us, in our class, we're going to probably try to use synthetic division, if at all possible. And this could use synthetic division on. Okay. I'm not going to do that in this video, right? If you want to see me do that, go back and watch the video for 9.2. You know what I'm going to say. But I'm just telling you, like, recognizing the technique, that's what everyone is coming to me and asking me about. You know, how do I recognize UDU versus UDV? How do I recognize this or that? And that's what I'm hoping to point out to you right here. It's like kind of compare and contrast. Okay, so those were the bigger on top ones. Now let's talk about if it's not bigger on top, like if it's bigger on bottom. I've got a few of those. All right. Now I'm kind of stretching out into 9.4, but what I'm, I'm not going to really have much to show you on 9.4 because I think that the new thing for that fits right into the quotient discussion. It was too much for one day. So the first thing is if you see the denominator is factorable and the two factors are distinct, like 15 and x plus 15 and x plus 5, we're going to use partial fractions. Right? Because it would be, you know, some number over x plus 5 plus some other number over x plus 15, presumably, you know, if it works out. I don't know about that 1 being there. I'm not going to work that because, you know, I'm sure the number is going to be horrible. But I just, you know, I made this example up. But this one is one that you would attack using partial fractions. This one, okay, this factors with x plus 10, x plus 10. I'm just going to use the power rule on this one. And, you know, you've got practice on this on quiz 9.2 and on quiz 9.4, so you, you know what I'm going to do. I'm going to call that 2 times x plus 10 to the negative 2 power, right, because this is x plus 10 squared down here. And so then I'm going to just use the power rule. Bump up the power by 1, divide by the new power, be happy. Okay, over here, I've got, let's see, this one is a complete the square integral. It's going to end up being 3 arc tangent of x plus 10 plus c. And so that one... And you recognize that because it's not factorable, and it's just one bigger than a perfect square trinomial. And I think that was pretty much all we learned about when in integrating quotients. There was a lot of stuff, but in 9.3, here let me just get a fresh sheet of paper. In 9.3, we learned about improper integrals, and really, what I've got to say about that is that the The actual integrands, for the most part, on this were easier. You know, it was a lot of power rule. And so, you know, the difficulty was, you know, looking at the limits. But if you ended up, like, doing a bunch of them, you found that it ended up being, you know, if x was going to infinity, you ended up taking the limit 
and if the thing that was going to infinity went in the denominator, it converged, it existed. And if the infinity was in the numerator, it diverged. And likewise, you know, I had some things going to zero because vertical asymptotes division by zero. And when we had a zero in the denominator, that was still bad, okay, still didn't exist. And, but when zero went in the numerator, it was, it was going to exist. So I'm just going to give you the, turn it into a limit. It's what you gotta do. Right, just consider it, do it the you know, same steps, antiderivative, plug in the top and bottom and subtract, except plugging in, that's more like taking a limit. Okay, so you just gotta be able to do that. And then 9.4, the only thing I've got to tell you about 9.4, I'm gonna put up a couple of integrals on screen. I, and if you're sat in my class and you took these quizzes, you probably know exactly the three that I'm gonna show you, right? All right, here they are. They're probably familiar, right? If you've been paying any sort of attention to my class, We've done, done this quite a bit, okay? Two of these three are going to require integration with the power rule. One of them is gonna require geometry, okay? This one requires geometry because this is the equation for the upper half of a circle, right? And we knew that it had radius equal to the square root of 25, so it was like that. And if I'm just integrating from zero to five, it would be a quarter of that circle, and you know the equation for the area of a circle. Uh, that would be pi radius squared. And so that would be the area, right? That's how you do that integral. Very fast, very easy. With these, we're gonna write these as 25 minus x to the one half and 25 minus x to the negative one half powers. And we're just gonna use the power rule, okay? Those arc sine integrals, while they are interesting and good algebra and, and good for discussion, we don't think that those are very likely to appear on the AP exam anymore because realistically, the people that are getting that problem right are probably getting it right because they're taking the derivative of the answer choices, not because they're you know going through all the steps and anti-differentiating it properly, right? So for complete the square, I really believe that if it was to show up on your AP exam, and I guarantee if it was to show up on you know your upcoming exam, it would look like this, where it would be one bigger than a perfect square in the denominator. And so as a result, and maybe I'll do this one. This is equal to three times the integral of one over x plus 10 squared plus one, which means that's going to be three times arc tangent of x plus 10 plus c. And that's all the examples I got for you for this video. If you're watching me, if you're practicing for the test, I really just say go back, look at the homeworks, look at the quizzes, keep running your integrals, but you know, you're probably already ready. So thanks for watching. Happy practicing.